All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. All right, well, I'm Martha and I'm the Heritage Collection Manager for the NAFME Public Library and I'm so excited that you guys joined me um, on Zoom. It's really, really different for everybody. Um, and uh, we're just excited that we can still do programming this way. Um, and I'll talk about some of our other programming at the end that we're doing. Um, but like I said, I'm Martha, I'm the Heritage Collection Manager and um, I take care of the Napanee Center and its collections over here. So I get to um, research and um, take care of the items at the Napanee Center all the time. And one of the topics that we always get questions about and um, is probably one of our most popular is our kitchen industry. Um, we, have, we have walking tours that are um, centered around the homes of the kitchen industry. And so I'm really excited to look at um, the women behind the men of the kitchen industry. And we'll be looking at um, the women who were um, first there as the company was starting um, with the coppices and the mutchlers and the zooks. And, like, and um, I'm not an expert on any of these topics, um, but I try my best to do as much research as what I can. So we're going to look at um, the women themselves, how they were all tied together and related, and then um, the clubs and sororities that they helped form, that one is still around today here in Napanee. So first we're gonna start with the coppice women. Um, and there's quite, there's quite a few of them. Um, Sarah Fravel, hopefully I said it right, um, she was the matriarch of the coppice family. And she was born in 1822 and died on December 29th, 1899. And her husband was Jacob Coppice. So Sarah was um, John and Frank's mom, uh, Samuel, John and Frank. Um, so Jacob was a farmer. And the story is, is that they lost their farm in Ohio. Um, so they came to Elkhart County. And they... Um, and um, they were renters until they were able to purchase a stable homestead. So when they first came to Elkhart County, they lived in Harrison Township. And then a few years later, they were able to move to the Coppice Homestead in Lock Township. Um, Sarah and Jacob had 10 children. Um, Daniel, who died during the Civil War. Um, Samuel, who we'll learn about his wife, Elizabeth, next. Amanda, Susan, and Rebecca, who all died in infancy. Eliza, who we're going to talk about also, um, and her connection to the kitchen industry. Uh, they also had a daughter named Sol Sol Saloma, Lucinda, and then John and Frank. Okay, so next we have Elizabeth Lizzie Berlin, and she was married to Samuel Coppice, and she was born on April 28th, 1843, and died on February 19th, 1931, and she was the daughter of John and Suzanne Huffman Berlin, and one fun thing about Elizabeth, or Lizzie, as we call her in the museum, is we actually have um, Civil War letters that she wrote um, during the Civil War to some of her family members, uh, to her sister and to her brothers. And she moved to Elkhart County in 1864 with her parents from Ohio. She taught school up in the public schools for several years in Napanee. So a lot of um, prominent citizens were proud of the fact that they had been her sibling, or her pupil, sorry. Um, on March 12, 1867, she married Samuel Coppice, and he owned four farms in the area at one point. And then um, he was engaged in Coppice Brothers until he sold his interest in 1890 to Daniel Zook. And then he also devoted his attention to the Farmers and Traders Bank, and he held interest in the Coppice Hotel and the Auditorium. One fun thing about Samuel and Lizzie is they 
1868, um, so a year after they were married, they made a trip to Missouri via covered wagons. And they had the, um, the newspaper article that I read about this trip said that they had a wonderful time, but in 1871, they yearned for the old home and came back to Elkhart County, and they made their home in Napanee. Um, they had nine children. They had uh, Minnie and Jesse, who died in infancy, Harvey, Frank, and uh, Fred, who all worked at the Farmers and Traders Bank with their father, uh, Clara and Della, which we're going to talk about Della a little bit later, and then Lillian. And um, it was said that she was a devoted mother and took delight in relating to her family and many other things relating to the pioneer days. So now we're going to talk about um, Eliza Coppice. She was born in Harrison Township um, on April 8, 1847, and she died of consumption or tuberculosis on November 10, 1880. And she was a sister to the Coppice brothers, and she was married to Benjamin Yarin. Um, he came, he was a pretty interesting fellow um, himself. He came to Indiana after the Civil War. He organized the first Sunday school in Napanee, and he was a charter member of the United Brethren Church of Napanee. Um, his hearing was destroyed from army service, and after Eliza passed away, he remarried to Sarah Bushong and had four more children. Um, together, Benjamin and Eliza had uh, five children, and only about two of them survived to adulthood. Um, Elizabeth, who we're going to meet a lot later, Frank, Ella, Edward, and Lucinda. Um, so next we're going to talk about Melinda Strom, and she was born June 22nd, 1860, and she died on March 23rd, 1947. She married John Coppice, and the um, great thing about her is that um, she, um, her and John were the first couple to be married in Napanee. Um, along with John was a man of very many firsts. So John was not only the first man married in Napanee, but he was also the first arrested and the first fire chief. Um, and John and his brother Frank purchased the interest of Frank Myers in the firm of J.C. Mellinger and Myers Sawmill. And that, um, in that firm later, they purchased um, Joseph Strom's, um, or they purchased interest, I'm sorry, of Joseph Strom in the planing mill and box factory. So they eventually, out of the box factory, they eventually formed Coppice Brothers and Zook, and then became Coppice Mutchler and Zook. Um, Mr. Coppice was the vice president and secretary of Coppice Brothers and was an active manager of the lumber department and sawmill division. And he was a charter member of the Kiwanis Club. And like I said, he was the first fire chief in Napanee in 1892 and also the first arrested for running his horse too fast. And after he was arrested, he actually posted in the paper a uh, for sale of his horse since it broke all the rules. Uh, John and Melinda had four children, Irvin, Lloyd, Gertrude, and Marvin. Uh, next we have Catherine Felty. And she was born February 22nd, 1859, and she died September 7th, 1942. And she was married to Frank Coppice on September 20th, 1878 in South Bend, Indiana. So that's kind of to be thought of where Catherine is from. Um, Frank was the president of Coppice from 1902 until his death, and he was a charter member of the Kiwanis Club. Uh, Frank and, Cop and Catherine lived in Locke for about a year 
um, after they were married before moving to Napanee. And I always picture Catherine as a very um, sophisticated woman because of um, one of our oil paintings that she had that we have um, that she had commissioned for her home. And it's very large. It's very um, it's very elegant, I should say. And the story behind the um, oil painting is that she actually commissioned three of these huge oil paintings to um, for her home. And she had, they actually had an artist come and live with them in the third floor of their, house, of their home. And the artist was a, um, considered a bohemian woman because she uh, smoked cigarettes and she wore rouge. Uh, she was also from Chicago. Um, but in 1897, Catherine was known to be the president of the Women's Christian Temperance Union. And she had seen um, Navani grow from a community of a few homes to a thriving city. She was also a part of the current club. Um, they had three children, Bessie, Harold, and Claude. So we're gonna talk about the Mutchler women next. And um, so we're gonna start with Sarah Froy Lish. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, she was born on March 4th. 1843 and died on March 28, 1933. And she was married to George Mutchler, who is the father um, of Albert and Charles. Um, he came from, um, George actually came from Germany and he came to America when he was 15 years old. And he was a Civil War veteran. And after the war was done, he resumed his trade as a cabinet maker. In 1866, he moved to Millersburg and continued his trade of furniture making along with an undertaking business. And in 1893, he moved his family to Goshen after buying interests in the IXL Furniture Company and the Goshen Pump Company. And he was an active head in the IXL um, Furniture Company, becoming its general manager in 1896. He was also a very much a pioneer of the Northern Indiana kitchen cabinet manufacturing. Um, so Sarah was a member of the Women's Relief Corp and they had six children, Emma, Albert, and Charles, who um, in a little bit you'll meet Albert's wife and then a little bit later you'll meet De um, Charles's wife, Alice, George, and William. Um, so first we have Margaret Elizabeth Early, and she was born on November 28th, 1874, um, and died on September 12th, 8, 1959. Um, I forgot to mention that a lot of these women actually outlived their husbands um, and saw a lot more um, of what was going on. She married Albert Mutchler in 1897, and Albert had moved to Napanee in 1893 to run the Napanee Furniture Company. And he also taught school for a short time as well as working at the IXL Furniture Company for his father. Uh, Mar Margaret Elizabeth was a member of the Eastern Star and a charter member of the uh, current club. And her tall queenly appearance and her dignified yet friendly bearing marked her as a true lady of the old school. So this I like this photo that I found of her because um, it very much um, gives you that cleanly appearance that was described. They had three children, Lamar, Carlisle, and Mary. So we're going to talk about Mary. I'm going to butcher this last name. Slipfer. And um, she was born on July 26, 1899 and passed away on December 19th, 18, or 1989. She graduated from DePaul University in 1922 and was a member of Alpha Chi Omega or, and Phi Beta Kappa. She was married to Lamar Mutchler, 
on uh, September 8, 1923, and Lamar was the former president and chairman of the board from 1935 to 1960 of the Mutchler Brothers Company. He was also the past president of the former Napanee State Bank, and he was a member of the Napanee Kiwanis. Mary herself was a member of the current club and a 65-year member of the Napanee Charter of um, the Order of the Eastern Star. They had three children, Barbara, Marla, and Margaret. So next we have Mary Alice Parks. So she was born on June 23rd, 1903 and passed away on March 28th, 1999. Her brother was the Napanee cartoonist, Francis Mike Parks, who she nicknamed him Franny. So when he moved to Cleveland and was trying to find a more grown up name, he decided not to go with Franny, but to go with Mike. Mary Alice graduated from um, Worcester College and prior to marriage, she taught elementary school and served as a principal in Cleveland, Ohio. She married Carlisle Mutchler on February 3rd, 1934. And in 1925 was when Carlisle joined the Mutchler Brother Company and he became the sales manager and later president. And he retired from the company in 1969. And he was a member of the Napanee Kiwanis and it was known that their family was very much summer residents to Tippecanoe Lake. And she was a member of the current club, which they had two children, uh, Marsha and Portia. So next we have Della Coppice, which she was born on March 21st, 1878, and she passed away on July 8th, 1968. Um, I mentioned her earlier, she is the daughter of Samuel and Elizabeth Kappas. So she married Charles Mutchler on June 12, 1901, and he had moved to Napanee in 1896 to assist his brother Albert in the management of the Napanee Canning Company and the Napanee Furniture Company. And they were associated with Kappas, Mutchler, and Zook until 1914. Um, after the business dissolved and became um, the Mutchler was dropped out of the business. They took over the business formerly known as the Napanee Furniture Company and formed the Mutchler Brothers Company. After Albert's death in 1915, Charles became the president and general sales manager until his death. Uh, Charles also served as a county councilman and was a member of the Kiwanis Club. And he was also a member of the Board of Control for the Community Building. Uh, Della, she was a member of the first graduating class of Napanee High School and was a charter member of the current club. And they had two children, um, Isabel and Helen. So that leads us to Helen Mutchler. She was born on uh, April 15, 1902 and passed away on April 1st. 1990. Um, her parents were Charles and Della Mutchler, and she married, she was married to Richard Chapman, who he was a native of Dewajak, Michigan, and he was a veteran of both World War I and World War II. He was an organizer of the Kitchen Guild of America, the founder of the National Kitchen Cabinet Association, an executive vice president of the Mutchler Brothers, president of the Kitchen Industry Training School, and he was also president of the Universal Screen Company and the inventor of the tripod movie screens for home and industrial use. He was involved in Kiwanis, the American Legion, and Elkhart Hospital. Helen was a member of the current club, and the family had moved to Arizona in 1978. And they had two children, Charles and Sissy. So next, we're going to talk about um, the Zook women, which um, I don't have Daniel, um, Daniel Zook's mother included in this because um, she was 
really hard to find information about. But we have Della Ryan Reifenberg. I'm sure I butchered that. Um, but she was Daniel Zook's first wife. Um, she was born on uh, January 1, 1857, and died on October 23rd, 1882. She married Daniel in 1876, and um, Daniel's great-grandfather helped to form the German Baptist Church, um, and his early life was spent living on um, a farm learning practical farming. He was a school teacher for five years before deciding to study law with his brother. And so he had a practice in Goshen until the early 1880s before he moved to Napanee in 1882. Uh, four years later, Daniel was elected the clerk to the office of the county clerk, and he refused a nomination for a second term because he decided to purchase the interests of Samuel Coppice to enter the firm of Coppice Brothers and Zook. Della and Daniel had one child, and Della died at the age of 25 because of a disease of the lungs, and she had been in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, receiving treatment at the time of her death from a specialist um, there. So we don't quite know if um, Della uh, lived in Napanee, but we do know that she is buried in Goshen, so there is a possibility that she never um, lived here in Napanee. So next we have Daniel's second wife, Elizabeth Yarin, and I mentioned her earlier because her mother was Eliza Coppes, who um, she was a sister to Samuel, Frank, and John Coppes. She married Daniel in 1885, he was 34 and she was 18 and they had no children. And then we have Jessie Howe, which um, she was married to Harold Zook, so Della and Daniel's son, on July 18th, 1901. And she was born in Michigan and then passed away September 18th, 1958. In um, Michigan also, I believe. Um, so Harold was the son of, like I said, Daniel and Zell of De, uh, Zook. He was four years old when his mother passed away, and he was sent to live with his mother's parents in Cassopolis, Michigan. And after his marriage to Jesse, he joined the Coppice Mutchler and Zook firm. In 1912, he became a junior partner, and um, in the company after his father had passed away. After Harold's death, um, Jesse remarried in November 29, 1927 to a brigade general, J. Paul Hawkins in Manhattan, New York. And um, I should mention that Harold and uh, Jesse had one child named Hal Zook. At the time of Jesse's death, uh, she had been a patient at the Battle Creek Sanatorium for six years. So um, this that you guys are looking at right now is kind of a family tree of looking at um, all the women that I talked about and how they're the two families of the Coppice, or the three families actually, um, how the Coppice, Mutchlers, and Zooks were related. Um, so you can see with Samuel and Elizabeth, they had their daughter Della, who married to Charles, and then they had a daughter, Helen, who was married to Richard Chapman. Um, their sister, Eliza, Samuel, John and Frank's sister, Eliza, um, their daughter, Elizabeth, married Daniel Zook, giving you that connection. And then here is the Mutchler family um, with Albert and Margaret Elizabeth and their sons. And then um, Charles and Della appearing on this family tree. So before we go in and talk about all the clubs and sororities that these women were a part of, does anybody have any questions?
All right. So we'll go on to talk about the clubs and sororities that they're in. So a lot of the time I mentioned that the ladies were a part of the current club. This club was organized in 1907, although the constitution and bylaws were adopted on January 27, 1908, and their motto was um, success crowns label or labor. We know that Catherine Coppice was the first hostess and um, their program was miscellaneous literary program with current events. Um, Catherine Coppice also served as their very first treasurer and other notable um, members that their names uh, stick out are Della Mutchler um, and Elizabeth and Jesse Zook. Um, so, and when they took roll call, it consisted of a brief review of a current event of interest to all members. The Order of the Eastern Star, I couldn't find very much information on the Napanese um, charter of this, but we do know that it was a Mason's group and it was open to both men and women. Um, the men needed to be a, ma a master Mason and the women needed to be a daughter, widow, wife, sister, or mother of a master Mason. So next, we have um, my favorite club because I, I dearly love um, all the ladies in this club because it's a still around today. Um, it is the oldest um, club in Napanee. It began as a social and sewing club in um, 1899 and it was originally called the Thimble Club. So this um, was a result of weekly meetings that uh, happened at Mrs. J.W. Carpenter's house, and they would meet to knit and sew items for children. Nine years later, they decided to change their focus and become a literary group and rename themselves as the Thursday Club. Their work included locally supporting the high school uh, band, furnishing books and glasses for students and teaching Bible in school. But then Bell Stoffer, a member of the group, decided that the group should rally around the efforts to begin to bring a public library to Napanee. So the club worked in 1916 to start to raise funds for a public library. Um, they had a um, art exhibit that they collected over 700 curio or um, curio cabinets to display artifacts and things like that and they were able to establish a fund for the public library and they started that fund putting 31 dollars in that fund um, and these ladies continue to be a support to the library today um, next we have the women's christian temperance union this is also a very unique club um, that we know was still around in the 1980s from, and it wasn't the first um, temperance union in Napanee. There was the Anti-Tobacco Society that started in May of 1879, the Good Citizen League or the Anti-Booze League that started in 1896 and they started because um, there was five cigar factories in Napanee and they didn't like that very much. Um, but they also stood for a new liquor law um, during that time called the Nicholson Law that gave voters the right to stall approval of a liquor license. Um, the Women's Christian Temperance Union started in 1899 um, when two or three saloons had existed at that time in Napanee. Um, the first president was Mary Uline, and they had a regular membership of 15 ladies, and their meetings were held on the first and second Tuesday of each month. Um, and then a little bit, I couldn't find a lot of information about the Women's Relief Corps, 
Um, but we do know that they organized on April 2nd, um, 1894, with a membership of 32 ladies. All right, so does anyone have any questions? This is Paul Dixon. I don't have a question, but I uh, wanted to offer some advice on uh, pronunciation. Uh, the name that I was going to help you with was Mary Slifer. She is my grandmother. Okay. So it was Slifer. Anyone else? I know it's a lot of information to throw out. Um, but I will say we also did this program because um, it is the 100th anniversary of women receiving the right to vote. So um, before this whole pandemic happened, we were going to um, have a lot more um, program focusing on the women um, in Napanee. So we might still roll those out later in the fall, um, but I'm just glad that I could bring um, this program to you all. Hi, I have, this is, oh, go ahead, Paul. Uh, this is Paul again. I see that uh, up in the uh, corner of the screen it says recording. I wonder if you could tell us about uh, how uh, people might find the recording because I have uh, other people in the family who might be interested in this later? Um, yes. So um, we are recording it because some people who couldn't attend um, asked for it to be recorded. So I can give you my email address. And if you want to send me an email, then I can send you the recording of this. Um, which, if you have a pen and paper, my email is m. O W E N at Napanee Library dot org. And I can I'll also put it in um the chat here. Let me find it. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, this is this is Ann Dixon. I'm also Mary Slifer's grandchild. And I was just wondering, um, what were your sources for some of the photos that you came across? Um, the, so the sources for our photos are actually in our own collection of photographs um, in which I can, those are available online so I will um, put the URL to that also um, in the chat box. That sounds great, thank you. And then um, we do have, if you would wish to um, get a copy of those photos or anything like that, we do have an image request form that um, they come straight to me and then I can send you a copy of the photo. Yes, I just want to comment. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you put a lot of work into this. I want to thank you. Oh, well, thank you. It's very enjoyable. Well, good. Okay, and so I also wanted to share kind of um, all of the programming that we're doing at um, the Napanee Public Library and Napanee Center this year. We aren't um, able to have in-person programs, so we've all gone virtual. So um, a lot of this is available, information is available on our 
website and Facebook page. Um, but currently we have our summer reading challenge going on. Um, on Mondays, we have expressive free writing on Zoom. Um, June 9th, I'll be doing uh, Genealogy 101 and teaching um, people how to um, search for their family history. We have um, Maggie's Book Bites that happen on Thursdays on Facebook Live. Uh, morning Yoga starts next week. And then we also have a resume program coming up. And one of my favorite things that I love to talk about is our Hit the Pavement in Historic Napanee. That is available all the time on, our, um, on the app called Pocket Sites. And we have four walking tours on um, the Pocket Sites app that um, we have the homes of the kitchen industry. So we have um, Lamar and Mary's home, Albert and Margaret Elizabeth's home, uh, Carlisle and Mary's home. We have uh, Muzzy's house, also on that tour, Richard Chapman's house, Harvey Coppice, Frank Coppice, John Coppice, Daniel Zook, and then Samuel Coppice. Um, all their homes are there um, on the walking tour app. And you can take those, you don't have to be in Napanee to take those tours, you can take them virtually. Um, and then a the other ones are um, Entrepreneurs, Pioneers, and Trailblazers. We have Along Came Napanee. So that's the story of the Lock and Napanee feud and the beginnings of Napanee. And then we also have Demolition, Destruction, and Revitalization um, as a walking tour on there. All right, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking your time this evening and joining me. Um, here on Zoom. So does anyone um, have any other things or questions? Thank you, Martha. That was Thank real. You, Mar Thank you, Martha.